Well, the ancient Greeks, going back to the ancient Greeks, the Greeks said that if I see more support than challenge, more similarities than differences, more pleasures and pains, I'm infatuated. If I see more differences and similarities, more pains and pleasures, more challenge and support, I'm resentful. But if I bring my mind into balance and see both of them simultaneously, I feel love. So I would say that the quality of your life is based on the quality of the question that you ask. So if you're in bachelor with somebody, it's wise to ask, what's the downsides? Where are the differences? Where is the challenge? Where are the negatives? Where is the, where is the pains and the losses I'm facing being with this person? And bring that back into balance, or otherwise you'll sacrifice your life and eventually build up resentment and then undermine the relationship. Mm -hmm. The same thing when you're resentful. You ask the question, so where are the upsides? What are the pleasures? What are the gains? Uh, where are the, the uh, similarities? And, and if you ask questions that equilibrate the mind, you liberate yourself from the emotional baggage that uh, holds you back and weighs you down and gravitationally making life, make, making life suck, you might say. And um, so I'm not interested. You know, people say, well, you know, I, I got asked today from South Africa by a woman that wrote an email to me. She says, are you happy? And I said, no, I hope not, because I don't want happiness. That's a mask. I'm interested in thank you. I love you. Fulfillment which is far transcendent to the, the illusions and the drug-addictive state of happiness that people are addicted to. I always say that love is the synthesis of happiness and sadness, and the addiction to happiness is what makes the sadness. And when I embrace both of them equally, I have, I have gratitude and love. So, uh, yeah, in relationships, it's wise to ask questions that bring your mind back into balance. It's another thing to determine your values, what your hierarchy of values are, your set of priorities, and what's important to you, and it's also wise to find out what's important to your mate. And then ask yourself, how is what they're dedicated to serve you and help you fulfill what you're dedicated to? And answer that hundreds of times. And then answer, how is what you're dedicated to helping serve what they're dedicated to? And answer that a hundred times. The more you answer that question, those questions, the more you're going to see connections between the person, and the more you're going to be able to live together. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to end up with alternating monologues and trying to talk down to them and change them or look up at them and try to change you. And you're going to have these, uh, these dialogue monologues that are basically you're speaking, they're not listening, and they're speaking, you're not listening kind of game. So you've got to appreciate each other's values because that's their identity. The hierarchy of your values dictates your destiny and dictates your identity. So who you're married to or having a relationship with is their highest values. That's what they're up to. You help them fulfill that, they're interested in being with you. All relationships are by default until something that helps them fulfill their values more effectively comes along. So if you want them to stay with you, you have a responsibility of communicating in their values. If you don't, go against their values, off they go. The, if you have a spontaneous realization that what they're dedicated to is serving you, you got it. You see it. You're thankful. You respect them. If you don't, you're going to want to change them and fix them, mm -hmm. and vice versa. People want to be loved and appreciated for who they are, not what we want to make of them. But in some cases, you may not want to live your life with somebody that you have to do a lot of work on. Yeah. You know, the, the, the universe is set up where for every two people coming together, there's two people going apart. That's exactly why we have a kind of a 50-50 ratio of marriage and divorce. And even in countries where they don't have a lot of formal divorces, they just got secret affairs that are going on. So nature is designed for build and destroy, union and division, uh, laws of similars and differences, as they say. And uh, so I'm not attached to either one. You know, I, I've met people that have been married. Uh, for 68 years, 75, my grandparents made it 75 friggin' years. Mm. And um, so that's amazing. But at the same time, I've also met a lady uh, in Belfast, Ireland that came on the ship that was 94 years old, had been married five times, that had had all five husbands, according to what she said anyway, die having sex with her. So you know what? She was an amazing lady. She had just climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. She had 30 years worth of gold. She was 94 years old. And I said, you know what? Both serve the world. Both are amazing. I can honor both, respect both, and learn from both. So I don't uh, put attachment on the form. Uh, you know, I don't think there's mistakes in the journey that, you know, if it lasts for a day, a week, a month, a year, five or a hundred years, okay, great, did you learn from it? But at the same time, if you'd like it to last, there's a science to it. If you'd like it to depart, freedom. You're worthy of love no matter what happens in your life.